Hey guys, uh, welcome to a requested video. Um, I know I haven't posted a lot of videos lately because it seems like I'm answering most of your questions um, in the comment section, which is totally fine. Please keep doing that. Uh, so I was requested by a student to maybe go back over how to use Google Scholar and more specifically how to use Google Scholar with Mendeley. And I was like, well, you know, Google Scholar works for some things and it doesn't work for others. And I've got my little list here to go through. And so what I thought I'd do is I'd make this quick video. Uh, I expect this video to be about five or six minutes long, but uh, we'll just jump right in. So Google is a great search tool. Google Scholar is also a great search tool. And I highly recommend you have a bookmark to it. But what Google Scholar does not do very well is help you find new articles. Uh, it, it is not a good source for what do I call article discovery. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're out looking for uh, you know, something on Python programming or you're looking for a relationship between two variables, like some sort of program evaluation. You're looking for something with some sort of peer review or scholarly source. Your best bet is always to go to your library databases. So that's ProQuest, EBSCOhost, uh, Science Direct, that's your JSTOR, uh, you know, these kind of databases that you're, you're, hopefully you're already accustomed to. And if you're not, go see my other videos on how to find academic articles in various databases. So, uh, that being said, Google is a great way to supplement those things and not necessarily utilize um, those for discovery. So, how do you use Google Scholar? Well, there's two ways to use Google Scholar. The first way is if you need a citation uh, for something that you already have a title for. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bring up my Mendeley. Pow, there's my Mendeley. And let's take, for instance, uh, this title right here. Behind the curtain called The Illicit Trade of Firearms, Explosives, and Ammunition on the Dark Web. Now, if you don't know what I do, uh, my research is almost exclusively cyber crimes. Um, and uh, dark web and things of that nature. Pardon me while I mute my phone. And we will go uh, and take a look at this. So I've got this title, Behind the Curtain, The Illicit Trade of Firearms, Explosives, and Ammunition on the Dark Web. Okay, so what, I already have this in Mendeley and I already have the article and I already have everything I need, but what if I didn't? Uh, what if all I had was the title? So I'm gonna copy this title and pretend like I don't have it. Now, if I were a normal student, I'd type this into Google Scholar, I'm sorry, I type this into um, you know Google and go, okay, I can find this is a RAND uh, organization, this is a RAND study uh, by Pauli, Pauli, okay. So I can get directly to some of these things through Google, but um, let's take a look at this. What I really wanna do is I wanna find the citation for this. And well, I'm gonna pretend like I can't find the citation for this. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna come up here to Scholar. Scholar.google.com. I'm gonna paste this in here. Google's very smart about this. Google Scholar is very smart when it comes to finding these things online. And bam, there it is. Now, what does Google Scholar tell me? Um, it tells me a number of things. I can go to the original listing, so I can open this up in a new uh, new tab here and go to the same listing I just had. It tells me who it's cited by. That's a good thing. Some related articles. Uh, articles here is loosely defined, so I would take that with a grain of salt, but we'll take a look at it. Who it's cited by. Now, why is this important? Because whoever found this article, this article here, this, this article here, to be useful, right? They've used it in their own research. And uh, these are the people who found it useful and cited it themselves, just like you're about to do in your paper or manuscript. Why is that important? That means that the research that they're doing is probably in line with the research that you're doing. So whatever it is that they're doing uh, is probably the same topic matter, the same subject matter as it is for what you're trying to accomplish. So the cited by is a very 
strong aspect to Google Scholar, and I highly recommend doing that. So if you find some amazing article in your Mendeley, like let's say I come down here and, and I find, um, what's a really good, oh yeah. Yeah, like so this is, uh, this is Nix's article. Let's say I find a really good article. This was way back when I was doing a Ferguson study. And I'm going to take that into Google Scholar because I want to find articles that are like it. Well, cited by 40. So I can then go through here and go, okay, which one of these are actually articles, which are books? Because depolicing is a very specific topic inside criminology. You can use it to find people and other subjects, uh, other articles that people are already doing that are very similar to yours or at least the same topic. Okay, that is a very strong aspect to Google Scholar. Uh, the second thing, let's go back. The second thing this shows me, and I'll close these, is um, this little button here, the little quotes. And that means, how am I gonna cite this? Now, don't trust this. Um, technically, it's correct. However, each one of these styles, MLA, APA, Chicago, Harvard, and Vancouver, all have different ways of formatting it on the paper. So if you just cut, copy, and paste this, your professors or your instructors are going to count you off because like APA has a hanging indent. Um, APA also says that, um, you know, that here the APA version is missing the journal entry. So this is not correct. So don't trust this. But what you can trust is this little bib text. Now, if I just click this, it's going to show me a bunch of gibberish. See, a bunch of gibberish. But this is actually very formatted text. And if you've had my other Mendeley videos, you know that this is the kind of text that Mendeley likes to read. So instead of doing it this way, instead of clicking on it, trying to save it, right click your bib text, go down to save link as, and I'm gonna do a small favor here to myself. I'm gonna copy the title. I'm gonna right click bib text, save link as, and instead of saying something like scholar, which is absolutely worthless, I'm going to save it to be something like the illicit trade of firearms, explosives, and ammunition on the dark web. Dot text. Okay, that is a file I can use inside Mendeley. And let me show you how to do that. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to find that file somewhere here on my desktop. And oh, there it is. Okay. Now I'm going to open up my Mendeley. I'm going to say, hey, I want to throw this into, what do I want to throw this into? Well, yeah, we'll just do a test folder. And just to show you that I'm only slightly crazy, whoops, I don't want to do that. What I wanted to do was this. OK. All right, so I've added this to it. And you can see that it took all the information inside that Google Scholar citation and added it to Mendeley. Um, so that's another real strong aspect to this. Hang on. Sorry about that. I messed up my resolution. Um, all right, so I can, I can take a Scholar article, a Scholar citation, I can right click on bib text, name it whatever I need to name it. Just name it something that means something relevant for you, uh, whether you want to name it, you know, that article or give it the title or something, however you can find it. Uh, but you can save the bib text out of Google Scholar and throw it into Mendeley and it'll be just fine. So why would I ever do this? Well, sometimes professors aren't as nice as me and they don't give you the citation when they give you an article or a reader to read. Uh, they'll say, hey, use this book, or they'll say, use this article, and they'll give you the article, which is really nice, uh, or they'll give you the book uh, or a book chapter or print it out, and you'll go, okay, and you read it, and you highlight it, and you do all your stuff, but then you need to cite it. Well, now we got a problem. But if you type the title, if you just type the title into Google Scholar, it'll probably pull up... Um, the citation file for you. And you can save it out into Mendeley and have your citation waiting for you.
So these are some real strengths of Google Scholar. Uh, the downsides to Google Scholar. If I just type in something like, hey, dark web, show me all the things on dark web. It, it literally is just a contextual search. There's no real, I mean, it's looking through my history right now is why it's coming up with some stuff that I might find interesting. Like I've already read this focus crawler for dark web. Um, okay, but uh, for the most part, this is not a very good search. <laughs> and a lot of students, they, they re rely on this and they, they don't realize that they're, they're spinning their wheels. Go back to your databases. Uh, go back to your EBSCO host, your Academic Search Complete, your Science Direct, uh, Springer Link. Go back to uh, ProQuest or JSTOR or any of these other large databases. If you're in engineering, go back to IEEE. Um, and then utilize Google Scholar for finding those one-offs or finding these associated works that mean something to what you're doing. Uh, this is called a forward search, by the way. If you're looking at something and you go, okay, I found my great article, I found the thing I'm looking for, type it into Google Scholar, click the cited by, and that's called a forward search. You get to see who else has used the same article that you find so useful the, and how they utilized it. And maybe there's some new stuff there for you and maybe answer some questions. Fill in that lit review. Get those citations that your professors want, right? It's good stuff. Okay, beyond that, uh, Google Scholar is a pain in the butt. Now, uh, I will show you a trick. I will come over here to my tools. I will come down to my extensions and I will sift through my extensions here because I have one. Where are my extensions? Oh, I have from time. No, 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 no. Yes, right click Google Scholar. So let's go to the details on this. Uh, find this extension. I know there's one for Firefox because I wrote one many years ago uh, that did the same thing and then someone else came out with a better one and so I just ditched mine. So there's one for Firefox. There's certainly one for, for Chrome. And what this does is this allows you to take any text, right click it and come down here to send this to Google Scholar and tell me what it is why this is useful. So if you're logged into Blackboard or in my case Canvas and we give you a title of, a, of a, an article or we give you a book chapter and you don't want to have to type the whole thing out or sometimes they're really long names like this one is, right? Um, just highlight the text, right click, send it to Google Scholar, it'll open up in a new tab and there you go. So that makes life a little more simplistic for you. Um, so this is kind of, this kind of wraps up Google Scholar. Uh, you can do some searches in it, like it can be useful, but just understand what you're getting out of it. And uh, hopefully this will help uh, in, those, uh, in those questions that you have. Uh, I find Google Scholar to be useful, but only as an accessory to the, the normal databases that I find myself in all the time, which is your EBSCOhost, Academy Search Complete, Science Direct, Springer Link, JSTOR, ProQuest, uh, Taylor and, and Francis online. If you've heard these names three or four times for this video, that's because they're a really great place to start when looking for your uh, your sources. So I, I know this was a little bit longer video. I, I hope this helps and um, hopefully this, I won't have to do this again. Uh, I mean the video, I'm not talking to you. I love talking to you guys. All right, have a great day and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.